after the victories of Julius and Augustus Caesar, the entire Western world was enslaved by Imperial Rome, from the British Isles to the lands beyond the Danube, from the deserts of Africa to the borders of India. By Roman mandate, Herod the Great ruled Palestine. His tyrannies drove thousands of desperate families to voluntary exile in Cyprus, Syria, and Egypt. Among them, Joseph Bar Jacob, carpenter, his wife Mary, and their infant son. But Egypt was only a refuge to Joseph, not his beloved homeland. And when an angel appeared to him in a dream, saying that those who would destroy the child were dead, his thoughts were constantly on the land of Israel. It's a fine bit of work. You have a hand with tools. A man should do well the thing he likes to do. Mm. Still, I'm surprised to find a craftsman of such skill in so small a village. You should go to Alexandria. I could give you references to a man there who makes fine furniture. Thank you, you're very kind. There, it's finished. And stronger than before. Thank you. And if you should change your mind about going to the city... When I leave here, it shall be to return to my homeland. Israel? Israel. I see. I dare say a lot of Egypt's guests will be heading northward now. Well, why do you say now? King Herod is dead. Over a month ago. Are you certain? Well, beyond doubt. Caesar Augustus already has confirmed Archelaus to be ethnarch. Of Israel? No, just Judea, Idumea, and Samaria. Thank you. Thank you for telling us. I'll uh, send my slaves round this evening for the bench. And good fortune. We can go back now, can't we? Well, Archelaus is Herod's son. But his power doesn't reach to Galilee. No, no, not to Galilee. You've missed it too. It will be good to see Nazareth again. they returned into Galilee, to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew, and the favor of God was upon him. Blessed art thou, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who hast sanctified us by thy commandment and commanded us to kindle the Sabbath lights. May our home be consecrated, O oh God, by thy light. Mother? Yes, dear? What is it you touch? It is the mezuzah, my son. This is the name of the Lord Jehovah, whom we love. And all of our people who love the Lord have a mezuzah by their doors. Inside are written words of the Lord. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these words shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and thou shalt write them upon the posts in thy house. The mezuzah reminds us that God is always with us, in our home and outside it too. And Moses spake in the ears of all the congregation of Israel the words of this song until they were ended. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak. And hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew. 
as the small rain upon the tender herb and the shower is upon the grass. Because I will publish the name of the Lord and ascribe thee greatness unto our God. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment, a God of truth and without iniquity. Just and right is he. You may pass the study scrolls, my sons. As you know, there will be no school tomorrow or until after the week of the Passover feast. During that time, think well upon all you have learned, especially those of you who will travel to the great temple for your bar mitzvah. When you are questioned by the scribes at the great temple, do not be afraid. You have learned, and you have learned well. I know you will be a credit to Nazareth. My prayers will be with you. May the Lord watch between me and thee, while we are absent, one from the other. And his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to custom. And when the feast was ended, they started upon their return journey. And toward the end of the first day, they came to the place where the others from Nazareth had chosen to rest for the night. This looks like a good spot. I don't see him anywhere. Oh, he's, he's likely waiting in the brook with the other boys. It's not like him to be gone all day. It's like all boys on the way home from their bar mitzvah. Why, I remember the trip home from mine. My parents caught hardly a glimpse of me till they reached the front door of their home. Now, don't you worry. As soon as I've tethered friend Goliath, I'll go look for the boy. No, sir. We haven't seen him since we left Jerusalem. Are you certain? Yes, sir. We thought he was with you. We'll return to the city. If he comes back while we're gone, tell him to wait here. And they returned to Jerusalem seeking him. And they found him in the temple among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. My son, my son. Why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been looking for you anxiously. How is it that you have sought me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. And his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. The years passed on. In faraway Rome, the Emperor Augustus died and Tiberius assumed the title of Caesar. Archelaus was deposed and replaced by his brother Herod Antipas. Then in the 15th year of Tiberius' reign, a new governor was sent to Caesarea, capital city of the Palestinian territory. Hear ye, hear ye, to all the subjects of Palestine, citizens, free men, and slaves. By order of His Excellency Tiberius Claudius Nero, Caesar of the Imperial Empire, his honored governor of the lands of Judea, Samaria, Sinai, and Philistia, Valerius Gratus, has been recalled to other duties. By order of His Excellency Tiberius Claudius Nero, Caesar of the Imperial Empire, the new governor, procurator in command, as of this day, shall be the Honorable Pontius Pilate. Hear and obey. And here is the most valuable item in the treasury. Jewels, rare jewels. The 
only ones of their kind. Records of our private agreements with those of the conquered who have found it profitable to collaborate with us, either secretly or openly. Oh. A traitor's bribe list. No, a bit more. In addition to the separate agreements, I've added a note on each man, whether he can be trusted and how far, what pressures can be used to keep each one in line, word-for-word -word transcripts of every verbal amendment taken down by hidden scribes so the bribe-takers have no idea their promises are a matter of record. I know. When Annis Rufus opened that casket for me, I thought it was a waste of effort, too. But we're not dealing with Gauls or Celts or Carthaginians here. We're forced to deal with Asiatics, men with Oriental minds, men who scheme and twist and maneuver until black seems white and your simplest statement becomes a grant of power. I assume your orders are the same as mine have been. Increase the grain shipments, collect the taxes, and keep the peace over a province of 500,000 square stadia with one undermanned legion. I've been promised fresh troops to bring the legion up to strength. Five legions couldn't keep the peace here, no, nor ten, without the help these scrolls represent. The Sheikh Al Bouquet, the Tetrarch Herod Antipas, the High Priest Caiaphas, jackals, skulking the Roman lion for his leaving. Ah, but scavengers, we've chosen to be kings of all the jackals, so the lion may gorge in peace. I suggest we read through them together. I guarantee you, it'll be time well spent. Concessions on their religious taxes, concessions on their laws, concessions on what they call graven images. Oh, you'd have thought we were the vanquished and they were the conquerors. Don't paw me. Get out. Go. Oh. Promises, amendments, revisions. I thought we'd be unrolling scrolls all night. It won't be so bad after you get used to it, six months from now. I'll never get used to mealy-mouthed haggling, and I don't intend to. I'll have a talk with this Caiaphas when we get to Jerusalem. With his beard in your hand and your sword at his throat? It's a very persuasive argument. For a centurion subjecting a village, but hardly befitting for the governor of a province. You married a soldier. Can't expect him to turn statesman overnight. Tiberius told you this post required a diplomat as well as a soldier. It was diplomats who made the mess. At least you can give diplomacy a chance. Diplomacy is a fancy scabbard. Useless without a sword. But without the protection of the scabbard, the sword can dull and rust. Not if it's kept in use. These jackals have bathed the moon so long they believe it rises and sets at their own command. Well, I'll soon put an end to that. I'll teach them who their master really is. But three days' journey to the east, the people of Israel were already gathering to hear a man tell of a higher power than Pilate, or of Rome itself. An intense man come from the wilderness to the banks of the Jordan. A man fearing neither Tiberius nor Herod, but with the courage to proclaim, There is but one authority, and that is Jehovah, the Almighty God. Give witness to him. Repent your sins. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. It was written by the prophets. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Now I say to you, the day of the coming is close upon you. Woe unto those who are unprepared. Let each man look into his own heart. Consult his soul and find his own answer. Hear this warning, you who are proud in your robes of self-righteousness. Take heed those who are arrogant with the strength and carelessness of youth. Think carefully, you who are devout in semblance only, but sinful within your hearts. The day is coming when you will stand alone before his judgment. On that day, there will be neither slave nor master, neither subject nor king. In his eyes, there will be only the worthy and the unworthy. 
Hear me, children of Israel, the time is short and the wickedness of our land is great. The seven deadly sins rage through Palestine like a plague, from the humblest hut to the greatest palaces. I, even in the halls of the mighty, there is no light. Do you dare to speak against the Tetrarch? I speak against sin, be it Herod's or any man's. Not yet. But even if a man has sinned as grievously as Herod, or flaunted an evil life, as has this woman he calls a wife, there is still time to repent, to be cleansed by the waters of baptism. When the new governor came up to Jerusalem, he was a guest at the palace of Herod Antipas. Apologies, Excellency, if I intrude upon a private meditation. No, I'm no soul-searching philosopher. I came out for fresh air, not inspiration. I'm not accustomed to the strength of your native wine. Ah, one of the few passable products of this miserable land. Wine, dates, and taxes. That's about all Israel has that's worth the taking. Strange. Hmm? That her people love her so much and a king so little. Her people don't know better. They haven't traveled. I was raised and educated in Rome. After a man has lived at the very hub of the world, savored the pleasures to be had there, <laughs> believe me, Excellency, I am as much a Roman at heart as you are. Indeed. Being loyal to the Empire, knowing the problems here as I do, it's been bitter experience to me to see previous governors taken in by grasping and greedy men like Annas and Caiaphas, men with only their own interests at heart, not Rome's. As a matter of fact, I've written several long letters to Tiberius. Perhaps he discussed them with you. He mentioned them. Ah. Your background, Excellency, has been that of a soldier. I've always found soldiers to be practical men. Shall we be practical? By all means. Good. Your instructions are to increase the taxes, correct? <laughs> no. I haven't set spies on you. I know Tiberius. Unfortunately, the Jewish religion does not permit its people to work upon the Sabbath. That leaves only six days of the week for labor. It takes all the produce of one for a peasant to feed his family and himself, of another for the rent of his land, of two more to pay his taxes to Rome. And all he can earn on the rest to meet the temple ties demanded by Caiaphas. So, Unless Your Excellency can find a way to add another day to the week. You're recommending that I order Caiaphas to lower the temple tithes? Only so much water can be poured from a bucket. If more goes to the cow, the donkey must get less. When my father ruled all Palestine for Rome, there was plenty for Caesar and sufficient for the Herodian house. Now these upstarts get rich. Mere tools of men, who are not even Romans of, of royal blood, whilst Tiberius is denied his due, and my income is a mere fraction of my father's. There is only one thing to do, a very simple thing. To depose Caiaphas? Of course. To confiscate his fortune in Caesar's name, to force his successor to cut the temple ties to the bone, and give my backing to the Herodian line. I am at your command, Your Excellency.
such a splendid plan. It's a pity it won't work. Oh, but it will. Why? Just it... because of one thing. You. Your Excellency. You were half the man your father was, but you're not. You're a sot, Herod Antipas. A lecher, a liar, and a fool. You had a country at your feet, and the Roman Empire at your back, and you threw it away. You married a Sheikh's daughter to appease your Arab subjects, and cast her out and alienated them forever. And then, to make a bad mess worse, you took your brother's wife in violation to the Jewish codes, and turned the rest of your people against you. Mistakes, I admit it. But every man makes a few mistakes. But only a fool would compound them, and I've no time for fools. Give me another chance, Your Excellency. That's all I ask. While your subjects jeer at you openly, and self-styled prophets shout your shame. That man! He, he, he's mad. Demented. He'll be forgotten in a week. Gone to the hills. It, it, it might be disastrous to take action against him now, while the people still believe in him. He, She's a mere nothing, a, a mosquito, a gadfly. It, it, he won't be heard of in more than one province. But about this other matter, when... Show me that you can rule a province. Then ask it to let you reign over a kingdom. But the voice of John was not still. Instead, his message spread through all the lands of Palestine. There are no maybes in what he says, not him. Repent, come to baptism, or be lost forever. No matter what you are, king, scribe, or common man, it's one thing or the other, and right away. You should have seen him face up to a bunch of Pharisees there. Brood of vipers, he called them. Bear fruits befitting repentance, he told them. Don't just go around saying, Abraham is our father. God can raise children from stones. You should have heard the crowd there. Moaning, some of them, dropping to their knees and praying, streaming toward him right out into the river. And then he looked at all of us, but it seemed like he was looking right at me. I... I went over to him and... He baptized me. And maybe a hundred others, too. And then he began to talk to all of us again. I will baptize you with water, he said. But he who is mightier than I is coming. The thongs of whose sandals I am not fit to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Here. Huh? This work is done. And well done, my friend. If you get a chance, you should go hear this fellow John the Baptist. I will. Will you be gone for long? It will be as the Lord wishes. Open the ears of thy children, O Lord. Open their hearts to repentance. Hear their confessions as they come forward. Grant them redemption from thy wrath. Give them the gift of thy forgiveness. Thou who art all-powerful, all-knowing, almighty. Come. Step forward in the name of the Lord thy God. Come.
behold the Lamb of God. I need to be baptized by you. Why do you come to me? Let it be so now. For thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. And Jesus, filled by the Holy Spirit, was led into the wilderness 